Dating these types of men, especially when they're over 40, are most are the most dangerous. So we're going to dive into the types of men you may want to consider saying avoiding a little bit before you dive in too deep. And we'll get into those five types of men in a moment. Now, really quickly, I know this topic says the word dangerous. And to some degree, I don't want to suggest anything naive, or let me reframe that. I don't want to blow smoke up your ass to suggest that the dating marketplace doesn't have its challenges. I mean, the reality is it is somewhat of a minefield out there in our current environment of dating, mating, and relating. And I think it's naive to 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 believe otherwise. And I think that naive nativity comes from this belief that chemistry equals relationship success. And women oftentimes adopt the philosophy, well, if we just love each other enough, we'll make it work out without any real consciousness to the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship. At the same time, I recognize many of you are rather frustrated, and rightfully so. It can feel frustrating because, as I said earlier, it feels like a landmine. It feels dangerous. And yet, when you're equipped with the proper equipment, you can actually navigate a minefield with a great amount of success. And I even want to go a step further to, to offer... The, the understanding that each one of you are so empowered. You are infused with so much power that you can actually change the course of your life. I am in full belief that each one of you can change the direction of your life when you are armed with knowledge. I say armed with knowledge, when you've infused yourself with knowledge and then you practice this knowledge in your life. This is why I'm such a big proponent of individuals doing personal development, self-help, and spiritual work as part of your dating, mating, or relating practice because it puts the odds in your favor. And I'm here to say each one of you has the potential. You have the hope of achieving something miraculous. You really do have. I want to infuse optimism for each one of you. Did you ever see the movie Shawshank Redemption? If you have, it's with Tim Robbins and uh, Morgan Freeman. And Tim Robbins was uh, unfairly accused of a crime and he spent 19 years in prison. And he literally, literally was walking on glass every single day of that period of time. And he had to endure a lot of pain. And in a moment, I'll relate this to our dating environment. For 19 years, I had to endure this. And yet he had a vision for himself. He held hope that he could escape. And he had a plan on how to escape. He actually devised a plan. And he curated that plan over a decade or two to be prepared to escape. And at the end of the movie, he does escape. And he achieves a life that he never thought he was ever going to achieve, maybe even prior to getting into prison because he lived a life of kind of superficiality. He had to endure a lot of pain to be in a space where he could actually learn to appreciate life. And so a lot of the frustration you feel in the dating, mating, and marketplace, dating, mating, and, dating, mating, and relating marketplace, particularly many of your frustration with men, is because you are on your own hero's journey. And by being prepared on this journey, you have a greater chance of achieving what you desire. So let me give you an example of one of the tools one of you followers of mine shared with me and how this can apply to approaching the process a little bit different going forward. I want to empower you all that you have the power to shift your own individual narrative. And this woman wrote, woman posted uh, how or she posted, she asked a man if he was seeking marriage on the first text exchange that she had with him. So I guess she met through a dating app. And I guess maybe, let me reframe that. I think it's the first exchange, but it was most likely the, the second or third exchange. She said, are you seeking marriage? And his response was, how should I know? I haven't even met you. 
How do I know I haven't even met you? So in some ways, he believed she was being presumptuous. But it wasn't she was asking, are you seeking marriage with me? She was asking, are you seeking marriage? And then he went on to profess that he was simply on the dating sites for hooking up. And she discontinued communication. By that one simple action, she literally changed the course of the amount of time she was going to invest in the wrong person. So when I talk about dangerous, I'm talking about investing in the wrong person. So one of the things I teach in my private coaching, by the way, here's a link to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you, is discernment, is vetting. Getting clarity before engaging can save hours of frustration. Now, ladies, you know this one I'm about to share next. Men are oftentimes driven by their sexual desires. You know this. You know this. So look at this man. He said, look, I'm just in it for a hookup, okay? So if the minefield is filled, and by the way, I'm a guy who wants sex. It's not the only thing I want, but it's something that I want. We, I, we, I'm, a, I'm a red-blooded male like the rest of the men out in the dating marketplace. And a lot of you actually kindly look up to me, but I'm no different than many of the men. I'm, I'm driven by my penis, okay? So it makes sense to ask some clear questions early on and we can curate those questions for you in my private coaching if you're interested, because I do personalize everything to yourself. But asking some of these questions will save hours of frustration. Now, we men, see, if you can assume men want sex, we men assume you all want commitment. Like, we basically make that assumption. And in fact, it, because you, you um, are more apt to seek commitment, you oftentimes give your power away because many women have been indoctrinated, not all, but a lot of you have been indoctrinated in the belief, well, if we love each other, it will all work out. We can work through any problem if we love each other. We can be so misaligned with each other, but if we love each other, we can work it out. Now, I'm here to say love is a powerful force. It is a powerful force. There is no doubt in my mind love is a powerful force. But just remember, to actually achieve a state of love, true love, real genuine love, it takes spending a fair amount of time together in a variety of different circumstances to actually quantify the level of love versus what a lot of people, a lot of women have subscribed to is, if I'm deeply attached to you, I will walk through glass hoping that you're gonna be at the other end. And I'm not here to suggest that for you. Hence why I, this, this topic is called dating these types of men over 40 are most dangerous. So let's talk about the men over 40. One of the unique aspects of the over 40 crowd, and what I'm about to share is anecdotal, but roughly 75% of men and women who are dating after 40 are divorced. So one of the most dangerous men to date is the man who has just been divorced or just broke up with somebody. So somebody that recently just ended a relationship literally minutes ago, those are very dangerous people to date because while some men have dependence, codependency, and they immediately attach to a woman, there's a high probability that whatever problems he had in his marriage will repeat in the future if he had, and he may not even know what he seeks for quite some time. So these men who just got divorced, going through a divorce, just broke up with those, their girlfriends, are pretty risky bet. You know, when we talk about dangerous, we're talking about risk. And I would suggest to you that you're better served by, for somebody who has gone through a divorce, preferably two years after their marriage ended. And certainly if they had a significant relationship, a good six months to a year before you choose to pick someone who literally broke up with someone a nanosecond ago. That's just my recommendation for you. Number two, since we're on the topic of divorce, a contentious divorce or has a contentious relationship with his ex-spouse. 
And by the way, this is true for us men too. You know, we don't want to date women who have a contentious relationship with their ex-spouse. That is usually two people that are contentious to one another, are adversarial to one another, oftentimes don't make a good partner. Women who are adversarials with their ex-husbands, ex-husbands adversarial with their ex-wives, basically they kind of go hand in hand. That adversary makes it very challenging to be in relationship. And you ladies, you have this beautiful capacity to see a good in the guy, but guess what? You're not only buying the cow in this case, you're buying the ranch, you're buying the problems, you're buying the dilapidated issues. So just be mindful that if they have a contentious relationship with an ex-spouse, or even if they're still in love with their ex-spouse, you can find that out really quickly. You can find, by the way, men give this away so quickly in dating. It's how they talk about their ex-spouse. Oftentimes their contentious anger is a reflection of how hurt they were because of how much they loved that person and wanted that person back. So just be mindful that these are dangerous men to date. By the way, it was 11-11 a second ago on the clock. Okay, number three, long distance dating without a plan. If you engage in a long distance dating dynamic without a plan, and the fact is, is the two of you are radically in, in um, compatible with one another, you are just setting yourself up for absolute catastrophe. Folks, long distance dating without a plan is a recipe for disaster. And it's really the understanding that if lifestyles are not compatible with one another, all the fantasy and long distance dating, that bubble experience that you might have will lead to actual sadness and heartache later on down the road. Number four, his life is in chaos. His life is in chaos. The light, the ground underneath him isn't solid. He's going through a professional issue in his life. He's got contentious relationship with his children. He's got, you know, he's constantly having to deal with problems. If someone's life is not solid underneath them, then they can't build the foundation of a new relationship. And they are just sadly temporarily using you. If you're not familiar with my charts, uh, my chart called The Three Types of People Actively Dating. This is not a fact. It's merely an opinion. Please excuse the glare. I have what's called users, spenders, grower, builders. Users are the, the roughly 20% of the population. They seek short-term gain, love bombers, players, gold diggers, entitled people, selfish people, only in it for the short run. And while the grower and builders over here that represents 20% of the population, they seek long-term commitment. They have their act together. They have emotional maturity. The average person is in this spender category. And the reason why I call them spenders is they will spend time with you, but they will seek companionship, connection, and sex, but no real direction, uncertainty in their life. Life is in chaos and they don't seek commitment. Many of you are spending hours upon hours and weeks upon weeks and months upon months and years upon years with the spender type of men. He is happy to spend time with you because you're filling a need temporarily, but oftentimes they're incapable of going the different distance. So be careful of those men who have chaos in their life. And last but not least, and this is the saddest one of all, is those men who are deeply wounded in their childhood or deeply traumatized in their adult life, and they've done zero healing. Believe it or not, every human experienced some level of trauma in childhood. Sometimes it's micro PTSD, sometimes it's major PTSD. And even a divorce, even a contentious relationship is a traumatic experience in adult life. Human beings who have been wounded most everybody has been wounded. So then the question is, how deeply wounded and have they done the healing work? Because guess what? Their wounds are going to carry forward into every single relationship in one way, shape, or form. Many of you women have been deeply wounded by father, your father, and you chase bad boys. You chase the, the players. You, 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 you know, you're not actually chasing them. You accept them because there is a wound from your childhood that most likely stems from your father. I've got a mother wound. 
My pattern is choosing women like my mother to some degree, not looks wise. And I've been working diligently on healing that wound, peeling the layers of those experiences so I could be prepared to meet that grower builder woman because I'm in that space of grower builder. And I want, and I, and I know I want you to know you all can get there. I want you to know you have the power, just like Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank Redemption. He held a space of hope, of optimism, and he had a plan. And for those people that hold the space of hope of optimism and have a plan, have a greater chance of achieving relationship success in their life. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, hit that like button real quick. So if you have something you want to add to this, post a comment below. I do my best to read them all. As always, if you do find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. Um, and uh, so uh, also, if you want to connect with me directly, hit the links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. Find me on Instagram. Check out my groups. It's all listed below. I'd love to connect with you.